After five years in the trenches, during the single bloodiest time in Belizean history, the masterminds behind the Metamorphosis program are now in a position to count their blessings one by one, 92 of them in all. I suppose uh, on an individual level, success is improved behavior, um, improved academic uh, performance, improved relationships in the home, having the home be a more supportive environment, and uh, social connections, creating social connections for the children and the families to extracurricular activities. We've had a lot of children join police cadets. They love police cadets. Um, we've had uh, them uh, work with community policing officers and sports programs. They join that sort of thing. So those have been, those have been successes that then, as this, uh, one of our social workers pointed out, we have children now who had been on this program, who joined this program when they were 12 or 10, and they're now, they're now on the point of graduating from high school. That's a, huge, that's a huge success in this context. A few didn't make it, but it was certainly not for lack of trying by the dedicated team led by Mary Vasquez, mental health therapist Jenny Lovell, and counselor Tina Cuellar. What they had not expected, says Lovell, was to have to take a hands-on approach with counseling and therapy for both youths and their parents, beaten down by the daily struggle and taking it out on each other. One of the um, workshops, group, I remember the one mother, she used to call the child dummy, right? And this little boy was at the bottom of his class. Um, but that little guy, when she sat there, she started crying. And when she started crying, the other mothers started crying, but they also started talking. And as they talked, they were unloading a lot of stuff. And as we went through the weeks of, of group counseling, those mothers changed fundamentally. That little boy that she was calling dummy went to the top of his class, the top. He won the, um, the prize for, the, um, for the standard six, went into high school and was number one, first in his class for, Form one, form two, form three, and now he's in um, getting ready to graduate. So working with the parents, you see, it's got to be the, tri the triage. We have to work with the parents, we have to work with the teachers, and then we work with the child. Though by no means a professional diagnosis, Lovell issued a warning about the level of trauma, mental health issues, and post-traumatic stress disorder witnessed in crime-afflicted areas. This is a result of the talk on war between the gang element and those seeking positive influence. According to Vasquez, they're seeking the government's help in advancing a special curriculum, hopefully to be rolled out later this year, on tackling the unique issues in areas overrun by violence. We are documenting this, and we are at the final stages of having that, that documentation of this as an intervention model. But I'm not going to say that this is the final and ultimate solution. This is not the magic bullet. This is, this is one approach to making, to making schools a safer place for children and to working with families to make the home a safer place for children. But there's no way that anyone, any one part of this can work in isolation of the overall national response. So contextually, yes, it's very important. It's a model, and we are documenting everything so that it can be scaled up. And as Lovell reminds, the stakes remain high. Our children are prisoners of their, of, of their environment. They're prisoners. You know, they, they can't cross over streets, and they can't cross over this. And so they're, they're, they're stuck in, in their yards most of the time or on a school de sac or in our Lee Alley, that's all they can do. They can't cross over. They're prisoners, and their parents now are prisoners too. I, I saw a picture. I was working with some, some, some guys. Remember I worked at prison many, many years ago? And I knew these guys. You know they're all dead? Every one of them is dead. And that was my motivation for wanting to work with the program. Because to see 60-some boys dead, all of them, we have to work with boys. I, I know people say, what about the girls? Well, you know, we, we need to work with girls, but right now the boys are the ones dying. So for me, we have to work with boys. And the ones killing. And the ones and killing. Aaron Humes reporting for News 5.